Okay guys, so check out this map I did with Python and Plotly and it's of Australia and we're looking at New South Wales and the bushfire season there for one day in 2022. I'm your host Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. This episode we go back to our Python playlist and we are going to use a map box from Plotly and we're going to create a nice map of southeastern Australia and we're going to take a look at some hotspot data from satellites and we're going to plot those uh, to see what kind of map that we can get. Let's get to it. Looking for more topics and discussion in this area? Make sure to join my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so this is a fun one today. Uh, we're going to be getting some data from... SQLite 3, we've got a database that I have loaded with a bunch of data, and we're gonna grab one day of the Australian fire or bushfire season uh, from April 2022, when there were over 2,000 hotspots in a single day uh, in New South Wales. Now, the first uh, library we're gonna get is the plotly.express as PX, so we're gonna be using uh, Plotly Express today we're going to use pandas as well, so we'll do the import panda statement as pd, and we're also going to use SQLite 3 because I took a quite large uh, download from uh, NASA Firms. Many thanks to uh, the team at NASA Firms, and I took some hotspot dat data uh, from there, and it was 300 over 300 megabytes worth, and uh, I put that into an SQLite database. And so the file for the database is in my hotspot folder and it is called firedb.db and I have some SQL here that I'm going to write out. Um, we're going to do a select statement. Uh, we'll do a select distinct and we're going to grab the latitude and the longitude and a bunch of other uh, data from the hotspot um, uh, data. Um, so the hotspot data has uh, a brightness calculation. Um, in this case, it's using the, uh, the T31 uh, sensor, uh, which actually has lower uh, Kelvin ratings or Kelvin measures than some of the other sensors that you might see uh, on some other um, satellites. Uh, it also has the uh, FRP, which is the uh, fire radiative power and uh, the acquisition date and there's a bunch of other uh, fields in that um, in that uh, extract and they are also in the database but in our select statement here we can just choose the fields that we want and we're also going to have some criteria in the where clause so i roughly gauged i pulled up a map of australia and i and i put some pinpoints down on a on like a google map there and I, and I grabbed some rough coordinates for the, uh, you know, maximum and minimum of the longitude and latitude for the New South Wales area uh, so that I could uh, create a box and get all the measurements inside of that box. Um, and then um, I also took a look at the number of incidents in, this, in a particular day, and I found that this one day in 2022 had just you know thousands of hot spots um, and they occurred throughout the day it must have been really something that day and that was the uh, the 5th of April in 2022 so there's our SQL statement um, which we are going to run against our SQLite database uh, which we've uh, specified up above there and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a connection to that database and to do that, we're going to put that inside of uh, try except finally uh, so that we can catch any errors or exceptions that come up and we can report those and then close our database connection uh, if we do have an error. And so uh, the first line I'll put in, in the try block, I'll put uh, connection is equal to sqlite3.connect and we just put our file name in there and then I'll put accept exception as E and uh, we're just going to print off that error if we get an error there and uh, and then we'll use the finally uh, block and that will 
uh, allow us to do something regardless of, of whether or not there's an error in, in the uh, execution of the try block, uh, it will run this uh, finally. And so whether you get an error or not, uh, we're going to try and close it. We'll say if there's a connection, uh, we'll close that connection and then uh, we can print done at the very end outside of the, uh, the try except finally there. And so that's going to give us a nice little um, section that we can use to, to sort of capture things. Like I said, capture that error if there is one, close the connection regardless of whatever happens, and, uh, and then print done at the end. And in fact, we could print you know, connection closed, um, that will be, uh, or that will happen uh, inside of the finally block if the uh, connection uh, is open and it was closed. So then we can go ahead and get our data and we can do that by loading a data frame. Uh, we're going to say uh, df is equal to uh, pd.readsql. Um, so we're going to use that readsql method uh, from pandas and we can stuff the SQL string and the connection in as the arguments for that. And then that'll return a very nice little uh, data frame for us um, that we can use for a variety of purposes. And so it's one of the nice ways of getting data out of SQLite. Um, and so just to see what's in there, we can print the top 10 and bottom 10 records of, of our data set that comes back. And we'll do that now. Uh-oh, looks like I did get an error, and so we did need that, that try, accept, and finally in there uh, because I have an extra, it looks like an extra comma after acquisition date there uh, before the from uh, clause in my statement there. So I'll fix that comma, and I'll hit F5 again, and there we go. We can, we've got our top and bottom 10 records uh, from the... Uh, the thousands that happened that day, um, you can see the latitude and longitude, uh, the brightness and the fire radiative power, um, as well as the ac ac acquired date, which is actually the same for every row because uh, we only uh, queried for that day. And we can go ahead and create our figure. So we're going to do uh, figure is equal to px.scatter underscore map box and that's the Plotly Express um, scatter map box there and the first argument is our data frame so we're gonna stuff the data frame in there and then we're gonna specify the fields that will be used for the longitude and latitude uh, of the coordinates uh, for our uh, map and so we've got uh, LON, which is longitude equal to the data frame, the longitude field. Latitude, that's LAT there, is equal to the data frame, the latitude. Uh, I'm going to set the zoom to 5. So you can, you can choose the zoom level. You can zoom quite far in if you want, putting like a level 10, or you can sort of zoom at 2 where it's quite high above the earth when, when the map is first presented. And so um, that's something to keep in mind. And then we can set the color of each of the spots um, according to the, in this case, I'm going to use the brightness. And uh, I will set the size uh, of the dot, each dot equal to the fire radiative power. So you'll get a sense of how powerful each spot you know, detection is um, just by using those two measures. And then we can uh, specify our width and height. So you can, you can set the size of the frame inside the browser when it comes up. So if you want a really big one, you can put in some bigger numbers. And if you want a smaller one, you can do that too. And you can also specify the title and, and things like that. And you can change actually quite a few things. You can change all of the legend and everything like that. But we won't really get into that today. If you're interested in hearing about how to do all of that stuff, uh, maybe a continuation of this particular video. If you're interested in that, make sure to put that in the comments below. Um, sometimes people like to see all of that sort of fine-tuning stuff. Um, today we're just going to get as far as our output, which is to get that nice map coming up, that interactive map that can zoom in and out. And uh, one of the things we're going to set is this uh, fig.updateLayout, and we're going to use the map box style 
equals OpenStreetMap. And many thanks to the uh, OpenStreetMap contributors uh, who made that possible. Um, OpenStreetMap is going to give us all the tiles and everything which will uh, allow the map to be to have all the features on it like the roads and the cities and all those kinds of things. Um, then we'll do uh, figure.show uh, which is going to uh, start our browser and it's going to uh, uh, put the figure into the the browser. It's going to create that one page there. Um, I did use wildland fire. It's probably bushfires in Australia. If some of you guys know about that stuff, put that in the comments below there. But I'll hit F5 and there we go. We've got our representation and look at all of those little fires. That's just one day worth of uh, hotspot detection and uh, it really is incredible. Um, the brightness there is in Kelvin and the fire radiative of power is in megawatts and uh, and you can really see um, just how many fires there were that day it's incredible um, and I can guarantee you those are not barbecues uh, we've got a, a little town or city called Wagga Wagga here and uh, they had quite a few fires around um, and uh, and you know it looks like up into the uh, up away from the coast it looks like there's quite a few fires in this particular spot here if we can zoom right in this is a nice feature of this map and we can see all of these now that that's got a fire radiative power of 716 um, but that's kind of the highest one we see here now when we see forest fires here in Canada like you might have seen in some of my other videos we've got ones with 4,000 4,400 uh, you know megawatts of fire radiative power they're just massive fires but these bushfires uh, I think these are quite destructive as well and just look how close they are to populated areas uh, which is very concerning um, so we can add a little bit to our, our figure here uh, you'll notice there was a lot of wasted space uh, on the browser there you know above and below uh, the the uh, frame that has the map in it and so you can also update your layout to either increase or reduce the margins so that you can make better use of the real estate um, that's definitely one thing that we can do here today so we can do that using the margin setting and we'll set that uh, uh, margin setting and we can put the the right top uh, left and and bottom uh, in there uh, the number of pixels uh, that we're going to uh, you know have as a padding so I set the right side to zero um, and the left side to zero as you can see there and the top I'm gonna leave now I put 25 there but there is the the title is up there I'm not sure if that gets affected but I put 10 pixels for the bottom which is smaller than what the default was uh, but I'll leave that top as 50 and I'll save that and then I'll start it again and you can sort of see uh, hopefully this will have more map and less yeah that's better so you can see now there's more map and less white space and that's exactly what we want to see there so we can we can use the space better we can zoom in uh, closer to some of these uh, these hot spots here um, and uh, that's exactly what we want to see there now the zoom level starts at 5 and that's kind of a nice uh, height for looking down on New South Wales there uh, but you can scroll farther out and you can see the whole country I'm sure uh, we could plot a lot more if we wanted to uh, but definitely uh, this is what we wanted to see today and one of the things that you might want to do uh, is you might want to actually write out that HTML file because you might want to give it to somebody or you might want to put it up on your web your website or something like that say you've got you know some kind of like service with a map on it and you can put that onto your website by outputting HTML using write underscore HTML on your figure there and I just ran that one and you can see this little file got put into my directory there and that's the exact file we've been looking at except now you can see the address up in the top there 
and it's exactly the same, has all the same functionality. Absolutely fantastic. That's how you can do maps using Plotly. Enjoy what you saw today. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And also, if you have any questions, put those in the comment section below.